some of whom are here with us today and who you will hear from shortly, and some who could not join us but are certainly celebrating along with us. Uh, first of all, back in May, early in the budgeting process, Governor Healy made it clear that tuition equity for high school graduates without legal immigration status was, quote, absolutely essential and a no-brainer. And her clear... <laughs> I, I was listening to WBR that day and my heart sang. It just sang. Uh, her clear, no-nonsense support inspired a lot of people and organizations uh, here today to give it their all to make it happen. So, Governor Healy, we thank you for that. Senate President Karen Spilka, this most certainly would not be happening without you. In the midst of an incredibly complicated annual budget process with, as always, a lot of competing priorities, you made it clear from the beginning and throughout that this legislation was needed not only for the young people of Massachusetts, but for our economic and workforce competitiveness. And for that, we thank you and the staff in your office, especially Monique Chang and Jonah Beckley. Thank you. Also in the Senate, we're grateful to Ways and Means Chair Michael Rodriguez and his staff, Tova Miller and Aaron Carty, and to our friend and constant supporter, Higher Education Committee Co-Chair Joanne Comerford. And we are grateful to leaders in the House of Representatives, including Speaker Ron Mariano, Ways and Means Chair Aaron Mikulvitz, and Higher Education, Chair, uh, Higher Education Committee Co-Chair David Rogers. Thank you. And because we are in Lawrence for this celebration, I'd like to uh, extend a special thanks to NECC's Merrimack Valley Legislative Delegation, uh, who met on our campus back in January and talked about the importance of this legislation. Um, many of them are seated here to my left. Uh, we have uh, Representative Andy Vargas, we have Representative Trom Wynn, uh, we have Representative Francisco Paulino, we have Leader Frank Moran, uh, and we of course have Senator Pavel Payano, who has been a leader of this effort over the past several months. We also have with us today the Mayor of Lawrence. Uh, Mayor Brian DePena. Thank you all so much for being here and for your support. Back in 2006, when tuition equity came up for a vote in the legislature, the public and the business community were divided, and it failed for lack of strong enough support. This time around, the support of higher education, the business community, and a number of organizations representing the citizens of Massachusetts was unmistakable. You'll hear from some of them as part of our speaking program this morning, and I'd like to recognize a few of the others who are here with us today. They include J.D. Chesloff of the Massachusetts Business Roundtable, Doug Howgate, the Massachusetts Taxpayers Foundation, Jay Ash, the Massachusetts Competitive Partnership, Ed Lambert, the Executive Director for the Massachusetts Business Alliance for Education, Joe Kreisberg, the CEO of Mass Inc., Diego Sanchez with the President's Alliance for Immigration and Higher Education, Jonathan Paz, the Massachusetts Immigrant and Refugee Advocacy Coalition, Nate McKinnon, the Executive Director for the Massachusetts Association of Community Colleges, Rob McCarran with the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities in Massachusetts, Mike Costello of Smith, Costello and Crawford, Gabby Pacheco of the Dream US, uh, as well as Luciano Pascavis Pascavicius with the Lowell Alliance, uh, Liara Santana with the Brazilian Women's Group, and Fabiola Rivera with the Coalition for a Better Acre, and seated in the audience, a large number of our public and private uh, college and university presidents. Thank you all for your support. <laughs> Lastly, and very importantly, I want to thank all the students involved in sharing their stories and generating support for this effort, and the frontline staff on college campuses who are the main points of contact for our students. People like Maria Hernandez, NECC's International Student Advisor, and our Mass Bay Student Advisor who's here with us today as well, Mrs. Ortiz. Um, they know our dreamers. They've been caring and advocating them, uh, for them for years, and they've been invaluable over the past few months, connecting us to students willing to share those stories so others could hear them and be inspired by them. Thank you all. And now I'd like to, uh, that's actually, here we go, let me skip ahead a little bit here. Uh, I, I'd like to introduce our featured speaker for the morning, the person who put pen to paper and made tuition equity a reality in the Bay State, 
an outstanding supporter of higher education, workforce development, and economic competitiveness for our Commonwealth, the 73rd Governor of the State of Massachusetts, Maura Healy. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much, President Glenn, uh, to everyone here at your team at Northern Essex for hosting us for what is a really, really great event. This is a great day, and it's a great day for our state, and I want to thank you um, and all of your colleagues at Northern Essex and all of the teams represented, staff and leadership of so many fantastic colleges and universities here in the room. Thank you for everything that you do day in and day out uh, to create opportunities for students all across this state. And as President Glenn rightly noted, a particular thank you to our students. You'll hear from one of them shortly, but we appreciate your advocacy. We appreciate your uh, continued pursuit of opportunity in education. That was what was behind this whole movement. And I hope you take particular pride today in all that you have accomplished and brought forward, not just for yourselves, but for so many generations of students to come. I want to thank uh, Senate President Karen Spilka and her team. We would not be here today without you and your colleagues' leadership and support. We're really proud of the budget that we were able to uh, work together on and, and sign most recently. It includes so many important investments, investments in things like workforce and education, ways to generate economic opportunity and growth for all across Massachusetts. And today is an example of that, and the Senate President has made valuing education and opportunities for ed education such a priority. So I thank you, Senate President. I'm grateful to members of our team. Um, you'll hear from the Lieutenant Governor in just a moment, um, who is a, a proud graduate of Salem State University. And <laughs> we thought you'd like that, President Keenan. <laughs> and also the daughter of an immigrant mother. She's a passionate advocate for in-state tuition and our state higher ed system as a whole. And it is a privilege to be able to work alongside our Lieutenant Governor. Uh, we share the privilege as well of working alongside Commissioner Pat, T well, excuse me, Secretary Pat Tutwiler, um, whose commitment to equity is reflected in all of our educational priorities and our work to implement them. Our Commissioner of Higher Education, Noe Ortega, thank you so much. You've dedicated your career to expanding access to college and universities uh, for particularly underrepresented students, and we appreciate that. And of course, President Marty Meehan of the UMass system, uh, President Keenan. <laughs> Outstanding stewards of educational opportunity in our state. And to Executive Director Liz Sweet of the Massachusetts Immigrant and Refugee Advocacy Coalition, uh, thank you for being here today along with so many of our great partners and advocates. Look, as I said, this is a great day for the state, and I mean it, because this is a state that was built by immigrants. It continues to be built by those who come here seeking opportunity. We have been about opening the doors wide for immigrant students who, help, who will help us build our future. From now on, no matter where you were born, no matter your status, if you are a person who attended high school in Massachusetts for three years, and you earned your diploma or GED, you can qualify for in-state tuition at our public colleges and universities, and you will be eligible for state financial aid. And this is a big step forward for students who have been growing up here, learning here, living here, working hard here, following their dreams right here in Massachusetts. It's nothing more than what is fair and what is right. They're going to be able to continue their journey on the same terms as their peers in a place that is their home. And for our state, our colleges and universities, our employers, our economy, this is only going to serve to boost the talent and the skills that we need to compete and win here in Massachusetts. 
Today, the students who seize this opportunity will be increasing our enrollments and enriching communities in more than 30 campuses across this state. The Mass Taxpayers Foundation estimated that this very program alone is going to result in a net gain of at least three and a half million dollars for our colleges and universities in revenue. Importantly, these are students who are going to strengthen our workforce at a time when we know our workforce needs are great. I talk to governors all around the country regularly. Workforce is such a significant challenge across so many industries. And I'm proud today that Massachusetts is taking a step forward, that it's going to help us accelerate and be even better in delivering in the moment to meet our workforce needs. I'm proud that our state is going to lead on that. We are going to grow an economy. We are going to create thousands more jobs that are currently unfilled as a result of a program like this. Our state colleges and universities are forging and will continue to forge connections with industry and to build pipelines to real opportunity. And that's only one reason that all business leaders have been supportive, so supportive of in-state tuition. Tuition equity is also going to bolster our communities. We know that our public college graduates are more likely to stay here in Massachusetts, to work in Massachusetts, to grow families, to grow businesses. Again, all of what we want in this moment. We're going to keep more people here and more talented and determined young people here who might look elsewhere for opportunities. And that is so exciting. And that is why when you add up all the benefits of what we're announcing today, it's going to make Massachusetts more competitive, more affordable, and more equitable. And that's why so many have believed in it for so long, have worked so hard for it, and I'm just so pleased to see this day come. Uh, I mentioned the budget earlier. Remember, this is a budget that funds permanent universal free lunch for all public school students. It makes historic investments in childcare, pre-kindergarten, local K-12 through schools. It expands access to early college and career pathways in our high schools. It increases financial aid for our students and provides free community college for students age 25 and older. See, we're working hard to make sure that every single student in Massachusetts has the opportunity and the support that they need to thrive, to truly thrive, and we will all be better for it. We've seen time and time again as well that when immigrant communities get a fair shot, they make the most of their opportunities. We've seen it recently in the success of the Work and Family Mobility Act, providing driver's licenses to thousands of people, literally thousands of people, who are now jumping at the chance to do the right thing. We've seen it in the demand for federal work authorizations among new arrivals, a focus that we're not letting up on, by the way. So we expect to see a positive response and a long-term collective benefit from in-state tuition as well. Again, I am grateful to everyone whose persistence and passion helped us get to this day, and I'm excited to see the opportunities of so many students going forward. Um, and this is a, uh, an opportunity to, um, to, I just want to bring the Lieutenant Governor up, who both as mayor and certainly as Lieutenant Governor has been a proud champion of our immigrant students and understands full well the benefit they bring in very real ways to the richness of our communities and across this state. Thank you, Governor. What an amazing celebration this is. I share in this gratitude um, with all of you as someone who comes to you as a mayor for the city of Salem, Gateway City, like Lawrence, for the last 16 years, um, chairing a school committee. I come to you as a mom who had kids in our public schools, along with President Keenan, who saw every single day for the 16 years I was mayor and chairing a school committee uh, how hard students worked, um, taking classes, participating in band. Think about all the work you do when you're in school. Some of our young students, our youngest students come here. Um, they're, not, they're not documented, but they're doing all the work, right? They're participating in all the same activities. And they cross that graduation stage, they get their diploma, and then there's an inequity that occurs. They can't go to the same schools. They don't qualify for the same benefits. They have to pay out-of-state tuition. Think about that. 
It's heartbreaking to see all the work going into a whole generation of young people who are here putting in the time, having the same experiences, but the minute they walk across that graduation stage, all of a sudden they're treated differently and they're not able to have the same access to all the opportunities they just benefited from in a state that we know cares deeply about investing in education. All of us in local government received Chapter 70 dollars, the biggest contribution towards public education. The new investments we're making to ensure that kids eat and come to school and have all the resources they need. To see that end when you graduate because of your undocumented status, well, that's changing today. <laughs> So I bring immense gratitude as a mom, as a former mayor, as a school committee chair, to know that we're going to treat all of our students equal. It certainly wouldn't be happening without all of the folks here, but I want to give incredible credit to Senate President Karen Spilka, who ensured this was in the Senate budget so we could put our names behind it and support it, and has been championing this championing this for a long time. President Keenan and I were talking about this being an issue when you were a state rep. That's how long we've been fighting about something that makes complete sense. And to our business community, if you want to see who our future business leaders are, who are future leaders of local government, who's going to be doing the work to keep our communities healthy and strong, come into a classroom. That's who's going to be our future leaders. And today, we just gave every single one of those students a much better shot at being the type of community leaders we all want to see in the Commonwealth. Thanks so much for being here and participating in this. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, thank you for your passion and your leadership. And now, she had the vision, the leadership, and the fortitude to raise tuition equity up as a priority in this year's budget process. And without a doubt, as you've heard us say already, we would not be celebrating here this morning without her. Please welcome Senate President Karen Spilka. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Whoa, <laughs> what a day, what a celebration. As others before me have noted, this is a long time coming and I think we would all agree it's way overdue. So we should just celebrate today because all of you that are here helped make this a reality. So you should all clap for yourselves and the person to your right and left. Uh, it's a very exciting day. This is an enormous achievement, a day that is decades in the making. And as we know, it will change so many lives and their families. I first want to thank Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for being staunch supporters of this in initiative. I do want to say when I spoke to the governor first about putting this in the Senate budget, her immediate, immediate response was, wow, this should be a no-brainer. Now, for those of you who know Massage the world of Massachusetts politics, you know that there are not many things that are really no-brainers. But this was such an immediate gut response from her heart, her head, and her gut. And I thank you so much. And I immediately thought, wow, this really, really is going to happen, knowing that your total support was behind this. So thank you, and thank Lieutenant Governor as well. And thank you for signing this critical policy into law. I want to thank the Secretary Tutwiler and Commissioner Ortega for your support and leadership in this policy uh, and making sure that it's implemented well. We know it's in good hands. Thank you so much. I do want to thank and acknowledge uh, the Senate Chair of, of Higher Ed, Senator Joe Comerford, for her advocacy and her uh, rolling up her sleeves and working so hard on this issue, as well as uh, Free Community College and the working group that's going forward on that. So thank you so much. And thank you, Senator Piano, for being uh, in my ear about this as well and a tremendous advocate on behalf of your constituents and the people of the Commonwealth. I do want to acknowledge, I, I'm not going to mention every representative here, but I want to thank all of you for being here. I look at you and I know you have been tremendous advocates as well for this issue, knowing how important it is to our students and to our Commonwealth in general. 
I also want to uh, thank Elizabeth Sweet uh, and Mira for their, for their advocacy on this issue. I, I think that um, you, know, you really helped organize and, and help get this, uh, this going as well. Um, I want to acknowledge um, and thank President Meehan when I spoke to him about this immediately on board, uh, President Podell from the community colleges and President Keenan for your leadership and advocacy and for all of the presidents that are here. It, it's really wonderful to know the support that you have and, and that you stand behind all, all of these issues. A big thank you to Northern Essex Community College President Lynn Glenn Lane Glenn for being a champion of this issue and our gracious host today. Thank you. Um, I do want to acknowledge and thank in advance. We, you will hear from a student, Joan Shari, who will speak about tuition equity. And uh, thank you for having the courage to speak before us today. And your voice is so important. You are the reason we are here today. You are the reason that we are doing this. I do just want to mention a couple of others. Thank the President's Alliance on Higher Education and Immigration, the Dream US, the Mass Association of Community Colleges, State University Council of Presidents, the UMass System, and the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities of Massachusetts for being staunch proponents of this policy. I look out here and I, I could go on and mention uh, almost everybody that is seated here for being loud and outspoken advocates to help get this going. As you've heard, this is 20 years in the making. Sometimes things take a little while, but you know, as, as with the budget, it was worth the wait, I have to say. So most of all, I do want to thank all of the students who will be impacted by this policy and those like Joan who bravely shared your stories and advocated for yourself and your peers. Thank you, thank you. For a long time, our reality in Massachusetts, the country's education hub, was that people without residency status, despite having grown up in Massachusetts and graduated from our high schools, faced a college price tag that could be tens of thousand dollars higher than their friends and their peers. That was money that needed to be paid in full, out of pocket, and without financial aid. For students and their families, that meant prolonging the time in school and putting off life expenses in order to pursue an education and a dream. For many people, this was just way too high and they did not pursue college at all. It was just unattainable for many reasons. Today, thanks to the tireless advocacy across Massachusetts, my colleagues in the Senate, the House, and the Healy Driscoll administration, those barriers are simply no more. As I said from the very beginning when the Senate included tuition equity in our budget, this is good policy and this is smart policy. It will lift people up and enable people by offering equal access to education, a key to the middle class, and an easier path to pursue the American dream, to pursue their dream. Tuition equity benefits the entire state. Everywhere I go lately, I hear a lot about competitiveness. We all do. Policies like this one that spread opportunity equally, I believe are how we will stay competitive. Tuition equity seizes the talent that we already have right here in this state by investing in brilliant, talented young people who call Massachusetts home and plan on raising their families and staying in Massachusetts. Renew removing financial barriers to college 
will help us fill critical workforces like nurses, health and human service providers, workers in the transportation sectors, hospitality and tourism. I would say almost every sector is in need of workers right now. Workforce is such a big issue. These are high paying jobs that we need right here in Massachusetts. We know that this investment will be net positive for our state's economy as well for our public higher education institutions. Finally, the best part of this policy is that we will have a front row seat to the amazing things that these young people will do with their, when their talent is unleashed. Because my guess in this pool of students that this policy will help and, and affect, there will be more than a few candidates eventually in years to come for governor, for cabinet secretaries, for university presidents, and maybe even Senate presidents. So thank you for having me here today. It's really exciting and uh, I invite everybody to keep making sure that we keep tuition equity and uh, public higher education as accessible and as affordable as possible. I look forward to seeing a bright future for so many students in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Senate President Spilka, again, for your tremendous leadership. As the headmaster of Boston Public Schools and superintendent of Lynn Public Schools, Secretary of Education Patrick Tutwiler encountered many dreamers, young people arriving in America at early ages without legal immigration status, and recognized the importance of ensuring everyone receives the best education possible. Uh, joining Secretary Tutwiler is the Commissioner of Higher Education, Dr. Noe Ortega. Early in his career, Dr. Ortega spent nearly a decade working in financial aid and enrollment management at public and private universities in Texas, where tuition equity for undocumented students was enacted more than 20 years ago. As our Commissioner of Higher Education, he has unique experience and perspectives on serving this growing population of immigrant students. Please welcome Secretary Tutwiler and Commissioner Ortega. I'll just hunch, okay, all good, okay. Thank you, good sir. Good afternoon. Oh, come on now, I was raised in the call and response tradition. Good afternoon. I, I thrive on your energy. It's an honor uh, to be here with you all here this afternoon to celebrate greater tuition equity in the Commonwealth. With the signing of this budget, Governor Healy expanded access to in-state tuition and fees to undocumented students in Massachusetts. We're here today to celebrate that with this action, we are one step closer towards a more equitable and competitive system of public higher education in the Bay State. By investing in our students, we are investing in the future of the Commonwealth. There's no doubt that with this policy, we are strengthening the state's economy, workforce, and communities. As of today, today, undocumented students can qualify for in-state tuition and fees immediately. The Department of Higher Education is also working swiftly to develop the tools necessary to evaluate financial aid, qualifications for undocumented students attending public colleges and universities in our beloved state. And I, along with uh, Commissioner Ortega, will coordinate with UMass, the state universities, and our community colleges to make sure that each one of our students has what they need to access those funds. Commissioner Ortega. Sure. I feel like this is an Oscar moment where I could say <laughs> the winner is the 11.9 million undocumented students, Yay. right? <laughs> Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Bienvenido a todos. Hoy estamos aquí para celebrar que nos encontramos un paso más cerca de un sistema de educación pública más equitativo e inclusivo para todos. Ahora, en este estado de Massachusetts, los estudiantes indocumentados tendrán acceso a la matrícula y tasas universitarias estatales. Es decir, que pueden pagar lo mismo que los, que los residentes del Estado. Gracias. 
Con esta nueva ley, estamos fortaleciendo la economía, la fuerza laboral y las comunidades de nuestro estado. Y por eso le doy gracias a Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Senator President Spilka, Mr. Secretary, members of the legislature, and to all the historic oh. moment and for your investments in higher education, which include the highest levels of support and financial aid and scholarships the Commonwealth has ever seen. As someone from Texas, I say welcome to the party of states, but really, really pleased that we're going to be able to enact this immediately to our students and begin to make sure that they have in-state residency tuition and work our way to making all our state scholarships available to them as well. Es un honor estar aquí hoy celebrando y cumpliendo con una promesa de posibilidad. Gracias a todos y adelante. Gracias, Commissioner y Secretary Tutwalida, para tus palabras magníficas. Um, the large coalition of supporters for tuition equity included national organizations like the President's Alliance for Higher Education and the Dream.us, as well as statewide organizations like the Massachusetts Immigrant and Refugee Advocacy or the MIRA Coalition. And we could not have accomplished this without them. Please welcome MIRA Coalition Executive Director Elizabeth Sweet. Thank you all. It is such a wonderful celebration to be here with you all today. Again, we have to say it um, as one of the organizations and, and representing so many more organizations that have advocated and, and pushed and spoken up and rallied for more than 20 years to make this day happen. Congratulations to everyone. So um, I am the executive director of the MIRA Coalition. Um, we are the largest coalition in Massachusetts that advocates for the rights and inclusion of all immigrants and refugees who call Massachusetts home. Our vision is a commonwealth and a nation where all can thrive, no matter where they came from, no matter how they got here, that all can fully participate in their community's social, economic, and social life. And that is exactly what tuition equity helps make happen. With this, we move forward toward true equity that no matter who, who these students are and where they came from, if you graduate from a Massachusetts high school, you have an opportunity for a more affordable education. One in six Massachusetts residents and one in five of our workers is foreign born. Immigrants and refugees come to this Commonwealth with a huge range of skills and ambitions. And as they make Massachusetts their home, they enrich our social fabric, they strengthen our democracy, and they add to making our workforce competitive. Others have already spoken about this, but I want to especially name that immigrants play a vital role in key industries here in this state. Notably, 29% of our STEM workers here in the Commonwealth are immigrants. Immigrant entrepreneurs make up a quarter of new business owners here in the Commonwealth, generating billions in business income. And the opportunity to access higher education and access it affordably helps put so many more young people on the path toward these kinds of contributions and skills and, and ways to make our Commonwealth the incredible place that it is. I want to again thank all of the legislators and leaders who made this happen, and particularly um, Senate President Spilka, Governor Healy, and so many others who are here with us today. There are too many to name. I also want to acknowledge that so many organizations made this happen. Um, Mira is just one of so many incredible organizations 
And as others have mentioned, the students themselves have really led the way um, in advocating for their own futures and speaking up to share their stories to ensure that, that this became reality today. The passage of this really does recognize all the ways that immigrants contribute to Massachusetts' strength and provides just a little more justice and equity for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liz, and thank you, Mira. As the former congressman for the 5th Congressional District of Massachusetts, which included immigrant gateway cities like Lowell and Lawrence, and now as the president of the University of Massachusetts system, with more than 70,000 students from every part of the Commonwealth and, of course, many parts of the world, Marty Meehan has been an outstanding supporter of immigration and higher education for decades. Please welcome the president of the University of Massachusetts, Marty Meehan. Thank you, Len. When he says decades, I get nervous. Maybe I've been around too long. Um, how lucky were we for, to be from Massachusetts? I mean, if you really think about it, to have a governor like Maura Healy, a lieutenant governor like Kim Driscoll, and a Senate president like Karen Spilka, to believe so passionately and to understand fundamentally how this is the right thing to do for the Commonwealth, and an outstanding delegation to the State House. And yes, I know, Madam President, it's taken 20 years, but I'm reminded when Lane mentioned about being in the Congress, it's been three decades, three decades, where Washington has been so dysfunctional, we haven't been able to pass real meaningful immigration reform. It's long, long overdue, and it's an embarrassment. Two late senators, Ted Kennedy, a Democrat from Massachusetts, John McCain, a Republican from Arizona, had a fabulous bill that if that had passed, this country would be in much, much better shape than it is. So I'm looking forward and dreaming for the day when a Pell Grant goes to each and every student who wants to come to college. You know, the governor said rightly so that uh, immigrants built Massachusetts. Immigrants built this country into what it is today. And we need to take the message here in Massachusetts and make sure the message gets out beyond. Final point I want to make about the University of Massachusetts. In 1862, there was a congressman uh, from uh, Vermont, a Republican, Justin Morrill. And he wrote the Morrill Act, and President Abraham Lincoln signed it into law in 1862. And it was a novel idea at the time. It was, well, we have these elite ed ed higher education institutions. Why don't we increase the opportunity for everyone? Why can't the masses get a quality education? So the land grant college and university was established at UMass. Amherst was actually one of the first ones in 1863. This is just as important today as it ever was. We need to educate everyone. The data on this is indisputable. Immigrants, whether they're documented or not, pay more in federal taxes, more in state taxes. They start more companies. They're more entrepreneurial. And we need them to participate. So I'm delighted to be here. But thank God we're from Massachusetts because uh, we should be very, very appreciative. But never get complacent. We have a lot more work to do. Thank you. No better cheerleader for our Bay State. Thank you, President Meehan. Um, everyone you have heard from so far uh, has been an introduction to our next speaker, uh, the real reason that we're all here today. Around 3,000 dreamers, young people without legal immigration status, graduate from Massachusetts high schools each year. And until now, many did not have a clear, affordable path to a college education. And now they do, thanks to students like Joan Shari, who have been willing to share their stories. Please welcome Northern Essex Community College student, Joan Shari. Thank you all, it's an honor to be here. Education is a great engine for personal development. It is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor that the son of a mine worker can become the head of a mine, and the child of a farm worker can become the president of a great nation. It is what we make out of what we have, not what we are given, that separates one person to another. 
These are the words from the book A Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. This is one of the first books I had ever read growing up in Dar es Salaam, where I was born. One of my earliest memories in the United States was in February of 2011. I was seeing snow falling from the sky for the first time in my life, something I had only seen on TV. At 10 years old, I went to school in Andover, Massachusetts. This, the year I came, I joined in fifth grade and attended all of middle school and graduated high school. By now, I had made friends and immersed myself in the culture and settled into this country that was once so foreign to me, a country I had only grown up seeing on TV. With its community and opportunities, this country instilled in me that the key to success is education. I always knew what I wanted to do with my future at a young age. The plan was to finish high school with a good GPA, go to college and major in nursing, and then finally use my knowledge and skills to work under UNICEF. I had taken honors and AP classes all throughout high school, and I had participated in my community volunteering. However, it was during the college application process that I had come to find out that I was undocumented. Not only was I undocumented, but I also didn't qualify for DACA. Suddenly, none of it felt like it mattered. My dream of going to college and pursuing a higher education were starting to become just that, a dream. Thrust into the shadows, I began to work any odd job I could find. While I cleaned houses and I did what I could to get by, I saw the people I had grown up with get further and further ahead in life. When asked by my peers why I didn't go to college, my answer was always the same. I'm taking a gap year. What they didn't know is that college was something that I couldn't afford because of my status. As more time passed, I was now seeing these same people I grew up and graduated with begin to pursue different careers. Some would go on to graduate programs, and as for me, I was still here. It's at this point that I decided that enough was enough, and despite not having the proper means to work, I decided that my lack of status would not and could not stop me from trying. That is when I applied to Northern Essex Community College. In order to apply for nursing program, I had to take prerequisite classes. Something that would typically take a person a semester or two to complete took me years because I had to take one or two classes at a time. You see, because of my status, these classes cost three times the amount an in-state student pays for tuition. So because of that, despite not having any grants and scholarship or financial aid, I rationed that this was just the price I had to pay in order to somewhat further my education as an undocumented person in the United States. After my semester was over in the spring of 2023, I decided not to enroll in any more semesters nor to apply for nursing school because that would mean becoming a student full time. And this was a luxury I simply could not afford on my house cleaning salary. The load was just too heavy to bear. But my story is not unique. Many undocumented people have undergone similar struggles when it comes to college and tuition. That is until July 31st, 2023, when the newly signed Massachusetts state budget was passed. It is first thanks to my fellow undocumented young people from SIM who have been advocating for this for, the, for over 10 years. They might have not been able to win this for themselves, but what they started will now benefit thousands of undocumented Massachusetts students who will now get a chance to pursue their educational dreams. Thank you to all the community organizers, the college staff, the President's Alliance, and the Dream.US and all those who have worked and advocated for people like us. It's because of you that people like me are able to study with less financial burden and more equity. 
Having the state alleviate some of these financial obstacles that come with higher education would mean a chance to a multitude of opportunities. For others like myself, it would mean finally applying to nursing school. Suddenly, the dream that was so impossible seems a little bit more possible. Thank you to all of you. Joan, truly, um, it's because of you and because of the students you mentioned in that magnificent story of yours uh, that we're here. Thank you for your generosity, for sharing your story so openly and honestly and generously with us. Um, you're, you're truly the reason for this day today. Thank you. John Keenan, I don't envy you right now. <laughs> um, Every segment of higher education, public and private, community colleges, state universities, and the University of Massachusetts has been involved in supporting tuition equity legislation. And one of our greatest champions, and I mean this, has been a former member of the House of Representatives who cast a vote in favor of this bill the last time it was introduced in 2006 and is now the president of Salem State University. Please welcome for our closing remarks, President John Keenan. So prior to this event, I thought President Glenn was a friend. <laughs> so he set me up like this, speaking after Joan. Uh, it is absolutely a pleasure to be here today with everybody. And the good thing about speaking last is everybody's been thanked, right? So I don't have to say a lot more thank yous. But I do want to put a little bit in perspective. And first, I want to thank President Meehan as well for your leadership uh, at UMass and echo your thoughts about the Pell Grant. I would like to see the Pell Grant doubled, right? Doubled. That really ought to be what Congress does. I want to thank my presidents. I'm chair of the Council of Presidents of nine state universities, Mary Grant from Mass College of Art and Design, Rich Rilipides from Fitchburg State are here as well. We serve the gateway communities of the Commonwealth. We are the gateway to opportunity. And so today is a wonderful opportunity for us to come here and celebrate and give more potential for all the students like Joan. They mentioned 2006, President Glenn. I'll give you a little perspective. Back in 2006, I was a freshman rep I think Vin, uh, Vin Padoni was with me up at the State House. I did 10 years in the House. But in 2006, in January of 2006, this bill came to the floor. Marie St. Fleur, Representative Marie St. Fleur, I don't think Marie's here today. She was the first Haitian uh, legislator in the State House at the time, was pushing this bill. And anybody that knows Marie, not easy to say no to, right? <laughs> but more importantly, at that time, were students. And again, I was just a freshman rep from Salem. I had no idea that I'd go on to become president of Salem State. But at that time, I had students like Joan come into my office and look me in the eye and talk about this bill and advocate for why it was so important back in 2006. And I said, of course, as the governor said, it's a no-brainer, right? It was a no-brainer back then. It's a no-brainer today. We get out on the floor, Marie St. Fleur, in fact, yesterday in preparation for today, I read the minutes of the debate, of the floor debate back in 2006 in January. And it was right before Martin Luther King weekend. And Marie St. Fleur got up there and said, what a legacy this would be to Martin Luther King to pass this bill. And lo and behold, is the, you know, the division leaders, you know the division leaders do, Moran, leader Moran, right? So we got a sense, and thank you for your leadership, we got a sense that the bill was going to go down. And the advocate suggested to us, don't worry, you don't have to vote for this. You don't have to vote in support of this. It's going to be too difficult back in your district. I said, but I looked my students in the eye. I looked those Salem, students in the, Salem State students in the eye and told them I was going to support this. And I did. And it went, it went down. Fast forward, right, 17 years till I think Jan June 6th, when we were all up the State House again, seeing the leaders and talking about this as it was going through the budget. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is for the governor, lieutenant governor, the Senate president, and the speaker to support this. It's not easy to get stuff done in a budget, policy things done in a budget. Right? I was there for 10 years. I tried. It's not that easy but it made eminent sense to do it this time for all the right reasons. So here we are up at the State House, and again, it boils down to the students. And every time we went in to see someone, they said it was the students that made the difference. 
And that's why we're here today. The students absolutely made the difference. At Salem State, we're proud to call ourselves a civic engagement university. All the way back to 2006, all the way up to 2023, we're still proud of that. We will become the first public university, four-year public university, to be an HSI in the Commonwealth. And we are extremely proud of that. So we are so proud to be here today and celebrate with all of you. And I'll go back to that Martin Luther King reference that I talked about in 2006 that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And indeed, it does. Indeed, it does. Congratulations. Thank you, President Keenan. Uh, our speakers have been standing here a long time. I will invite them to find a seat if they would like to, and the governor and her team will spend a few minutes taking some questions from the press. Come on in, Secretary. Uh, any questions on topic about today? Again, I. All right. Thanks. Um, I can. Just a minute. Um, I hope, and I would challenge anybody who has questions, concerns, wants to talk about immigration right now in this country, in this moment, to listen to Joan and her story. And I think the reason I get emotional about it is because I'm very invested and seeing their success. I know what that means for the success for themselves as individuals, for their families. I also know what it means for the success of this state and this country. And unfortunately, from time to time, we see voices emerge that look to stoke fears and bigotry all in the furtherance of some perceived political gain, oftentimes. And I would just encourage folks from across the political spectrum here in Massachusetts and across community to recognize what legislation like this is all about. It's about empowering people. It's about giving opportunity to people. It's about what this country has purported to be about from its very beginning, at least as enshrined in law, not always implemented or acted on. That is work that continues every day. But that's what this is about. And that's why policies like this are so important, because they're about people. They're about people. And the furtherance of a good, indeed a collective good. And so I'm so proud to just have the privilege of being able to sign a budget presented that reflects this sort of priority. I'm excited to see what Joan does. My heart breaks for the many, many students who for so long were not able to take advantage of something that should not be an advantage, should be a right here in the state. We are home to the first public school in the country. We are home to the first public university. We're home to the first public library. Education is our calling card because we know what it means for the advancement of the health and well-being of individuals and of communities. So in this moment, when we talk a lot about new arrivals. We talk a lot about dreamers. We talk a lot about the very unfinished business of our United States Congress. Let's take this moment in Massachusetts to find ways to empower, as we're doing through in-state tuition, as we're doing through driver's licenses, as we're doing in finding ways to house and employ new arrivals to our lands. 
That's my message. That's what I think about when I think about what Joan <laughs> had to say up here a little while ago. And again, I just, you know, we spent a lot of time listening to and talking to and meeting young people around this state. And can you think of a finer example of a young person in this state? The perseverance, the willingness to go out and take those honors classes, take those AP classes, do everything right. And in the face of incredible, almost cruel injustice, the denial of an opportunity to pursue further opportunity still finds a way to get up every day, clean houses, take a course here and there, just as a means towards something and to never give up. So we'll take inspiration from your story, Joan. And um, I can assure you that Secretary Tutwiler and Commissioner Ortega are hard at work making sure that this is implemented as expeditiously as possible. Thank you to our college presidents and their teams for the work that you were doing to make that happen. Well, we recently secured $2 million in FEMA money uh, um, for the state that will help um, on this, but we need more. We need more federal money, and I've spoken a long time about my continued uh, demand for expedited work authorizations. The fact of the matter is, uh, every single new arrival you speak to, to a person, um, is ready to work, wants to work, is coming to this country and coming to our state with skills, talents, and, and experiences that will benefit so many industries across this state. So those are the two things that we continue to work on. Thank you for the question. And excuse me, Governor, I don't mean to stand in front of you. Uh, no, but I, I want to make sure that uh, what we're doing is making sure that we can estimate based on the information we have, right? So we have estimated that several thousand students can begin to benefit from this program when it's fully launched. At the beginning, you know, obviously we've got to roll it out in what we have available to them. So slowly we'll reach the full impact. Uh, I will remind us all that, you know, there's a number of other students who never identified themselves because they didn't think this was a possibility. They're the ones that we're trying to figure out how to reach out to and connect with, right? And many of them may not be listening to this press conference, right? May not be. So we're hoping in those advocacies, we may even double or triple the numbers if that's at all possible in Massachusetts. So it's a good question. And we are eager to find out how many will take us up on the offer. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon.